All right, here in this video, we're actually gonna find some derivatives using the quotient rule. Um, and I'll do, a, uh, do it a couple different ways. I'll use both the formula and my fun rhyme. So here I've got f of x equals x cubed minus one divided by three x squared minus five. I'm gonna call the top part of this rational function, oops, I'm gonna call that t. And I'm gonna call the bottom part of that rational function, how about we call that b. If you need to, off to the side, I think especially when you're starting off, it can be helpful to say, okay, here t, that is x cubed minus one, t prime, I know I'm gonna need that, that is three x squared, and b, let's see, that is three x squared minus five, b prime, my derivative, that is going to be six x. So, when I look at my quotient rule formula, my quotient rule formula, if I'm using b and t, says, oops, y prime, or rather, the derivative f prime of x is equal to, uh, let's see, low, I, ha I even have to say the, remind, the rhyme even to remember it, low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, away we go. All right, so let's see, what are we starting with? We are starting with b right here. So we are starting with uh, 3x squared minus 5 times t prime, so times 3x squared, minus t, so that's going to be x cubed minus 1, x cubed minus 1, uh, d low times b prime, so times 6x square the bottom, let's see what's our denominator look like. 3x squared minus five quantity squared and away we go. Um, please, I would highly, highly encourage you, I would use parentheses around every single one of these functions and every single one of these derivatives, particularly in your numerator. Um, that's the part that I really wanna focus on simplifying. And that to be honest is the easiest place to make a mistake in these in these problems is somewhere in this numerator. So make sure uh, you use parentheses. I think they're really, really helpful um, because I do want to go ahead and simplify the numerator. So this top part, we're going to simplify this. The denominator, I don't want you to worry about simplifying that. We can just leave that as 3x squared minus 5 quantity squared. So we're not going to do anything with that. Um, so in my numerator, here I've got to, let's see, distribute 3x squared. So let's see, my derivative, f prime of x, should be 9x to the fourth. And let's see, minus 15x squared. Here, be really careful with this minus sign here as well. Um, some students will say, okay, well, we should distribute that, and they'll distribute it here and over here. And we don't wanna do that. We actually only wanna distribute that at only one of those times. So usually what I like to do is I like to go ahead and say, you know what, let's just distribute this part first. We'll come back and worry about the minus sign in the next step. But I'm just gonna distribute that six x. So minus, we'll carry the parentheses down, minus six x to the fourth, minus one times six x, that's gonna be six x. All of this divided by three x squared minus five quantity squared. Now that I've gone ahead and distributed, now I'll go ahead and distribute this minus sign. So I'm gonna change that to a plus and then change the signs inside of my parentheses. And then for my last step, I'm just gonna combine any like terms that I have uh, in my numerator, I only see 9x to the 4th and negative 6x to the 4th. So when I combine those, I should have 3x to the 4th power minus 15x squared plus 6x, all of that divided by 3x squared minus 5 quantity squared. You could go and factor that. It looks like we could factor out a 3x from our numerator, but I don't think that's really necessary here. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm just gonna leave my answer just like this. 
All right, let's move on to our next example. Here we've got y equals two divided by five x squared minus 25 x plus 10. Again, if you need to, off to the side, let's write t equals two. This one's kind of a little weird here because the derivative of our numerator two, well, two is a constant, so its derivative is zero. So we'll see how that plays out in just a minute. B, our denominator, let's see, 5x squared minus 25x plus 10. And then B prime here, let's see, what do we got? We've got 10x minus 25. So if we remember our quotient rule, low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. So let's see, b, we start with b, our denominator. That is gonna be five x squared minus 25 x plus 10 times t prime. Well, in this case, this is kinda funny here because t prime is zero, but don't think too hard about it right now. We're just gonna go ahead and plug in zero. Minus t, so that's gonna be two d low derivative of our denominator, which in this case is 10x minus 25. Square the bottom, 5x squared minus 25x plus 10. Square the bottom and away we go. So again, it's really just all about simplifying that numerator. That's all I really wanna focus on. The denominator, that can stay the way it is. So in my numerator, the first term well, I've got 5x squared, oops, I've got 5x squared minus 25x plus 10, all of that times zero. Well, anything times zero is zero, so zero minus, over here, I'm gonna take the, oops, I'm gonna take this two, and I'm going to distribute that to the 10x and the negative 25. And actually we can distribute that negative two if we want, or you can leave it out front and distribute that in the next step, that's up to you. Um, I'll leave that outside the parentheses. So let's see, I should have 20x minus 50, all of that divided by five x squared minus 25x plus 10, quantity squared. And if we distribute that minus sign through, we should have negative 20x plus 50 all over 5x squared minus 25x plus 10 quantity squared. Again, you could factor out that numerator. It looks like we could factor out a, a 10 if we really wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna leave it as negative uh, 20x plus 50 divided by 5x squared minus 25x plus 10 quantity squared. So just please be careful, please take your time with these because it's really easy to make a mistake. Um, setting this up can be challenging, but I actually think the more challenging part is simplifying it. I think the, the algebra part is, is actually the hardest part. But we've got one more example here. And again, just like with the product rule, um, I hope that as you get more confident, you can kind of speed this process up a little bit. Um, you don't necessarily need to write out here's t and here's t prime and here's b and here's b prime. Again though, if that helps you, please continue to do that. As long as you get the problem right, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. So I want to look at um, f of x equals e to the x over x cubed minus eight. So if I'm looking at a problem like this, I might want to say, okay, well, I'm not going to write out t and t prime and b and b prime. I'm just going to kind of work this problem as I go. So f prime of x, if you need to, maybe it would help to continue to write out that formula. Low d high minus high d low, square the bottom, and away we go. So low, so we're going to start with x cubed minus 8. And we'll continue to use the colors. I think that's helpful. x cubed minus 8 d high, derivative of my numerator, which in this case is e to the x, well, derivative of e to the x is e to the x, minus high, so that's e to the x, d low, derivative of x cubed minus eight, that's gonna be three x squared, 
square the bottom. So that's going to be x cubed minus 8 quantity squared. And away we go. Again, here, all I'm looking to do is simplify the numerator. So this is really the only piece that I want to focus on um, simplifying. The denominator, the only time I'll simplify the denominator if it's a monomial. But here in this case, we've got two terms, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if I distribute e to the x, I can't really simplify that a whole lot. It's just going to look like x cubed times e to the x minus 8 times e to the x. Minus over here, if I multiply these two terms, I'm just going to have 3x squared times e to the x all over x cubed minus 8 quantity squared. Again, you could leave your answer like that if you wanted to. Here I might go ahead and factor out an e to the x just because we have quite a few of them. Um, and then that would leave us with x cubed minus 8 minus 3x squared all of that divided by x cubed minus 8 quantity squared. Either one of these is fine. Again, you don't necessarily need to do any factoring, but it can be helpful if we're working with the derivative after the fact. Again, just like I said at the end of the product rule video, uh, practicing the quotient rule and practicing with the homework problems is going to be really, really important. This is a rule we're going to come back to quite often throughout the rest of this course. So it's really important that we get a handle on it now so that we have a good understanding of it later on in the course as well.